Hello everyone, thank you for joining us in this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning series for literacy. Today's lesson is designed for kindergartners, but any child who's out there who's interested, you're welcome to join us. My name is Kate Lyle and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Roosevelt Elementary School in Spokane and I'll be your teacher for this lesson. This is the second lesson in this series. If you didn't see the previous lesson, it, you can find it on the KSPS website but you can still tune in to today's lesson, even if you haven't seen the other. Today, we're going to be learning about butterflies. We'll be finding connections between pieces of information in the text from caterpillar to butterfly to help us better understand how a butterfly grows and changes. There are a few tools you'll need for today's lesson. You'll need two pieces of paper and a pencil. And if you have crayons or markers handy, you can grab those too. I'll give you a moment while you gather your supplies. Let's get started. From Caterpillar to Butterfly by Deborah Heiligman, illustrated by Barry Weissman. This means Deborah Heiligman wrote the words and Barry Weissman drew the pictures. Today, a caterpillar came to school in a jar. It is eating green leaves. It is climbing and wiggling. This tiny caterpillar is going to change. It will change into a beautiful butterfly. Caterpillars usually turn into butterflies outdoors. They live in gardens and meadows and yards but we will watch our caterpillar change into a butterfly right here in our classroom. This change is called metamorphosis. Our caterpillar started out as a tiny egg. The mother butterfly laid the egg on a leaf. The egg is tiny. It is the size of a pinhead. When the caterpillar hatched out of the egg, it was hungry. It ate its way out of its own eggshell. Then it started to eat green plants right away. The mother butterfly lays her eggs on plants that the caterpillar will eat. These are called host plants. A caterpillar's job is to eat and eat and eat, so it will grow and grow and grow. Each day when we come to school, we look at our caterpillar. Each day it is bigger. The caterpillar eats and grows for 12 to 14 days. Our skin grows with us, but a caterpillar skin does not grow. When the caterpillar gets too big for its skin, the skin splits down the back. The caterpillar crawls right out of its own skin. It has new skin underneath. This is called molting. Our caterpillar will molt four or five times. After many days, our caterpillar is finished growing. It is much bigger than when it first came to school. It is almost as big as my little finger now. Our caterpillar is making a special house. First, it makes a button of silk. It uses this button to hang upside down from a twig. Then it molts for the last time. Instead of a new skin, this time there is a hard shell. This shell is called a chrysalis. Our caterpillar will stay inside the chrysalis for a long time. The chrysalis is also called the pupa. Every day the chrysalis looks the same. We can't see anything happening, but inside the chrysalis, our caterpillar is changing. Will our caterpillar ever turn into a butterfly? Will it ever come out of its chrysalis? We can hardly wait. 
but we do. We wait and wait and wait. Then, one day, during snack time, somebody shouts, Look! And we rush over to see. The chrysalis is cracking. We see a head, a body, and then wings. It's a butterfly. The tiny caterpillar who came to school in a jar turned into a painted lady butterfly, and we saw it happen. Our butterfly is damp and crumpled. It hangs onto the chrysalis while its wings flap, flap, flap. Blood pumps into its wings. The wings straighten out and dry. Soon our butterfly will be ready to fly. In two hours, the wings are dry and the butterfly is ready to fly. Our butterfly cannot stay in the jar. It needs to be outside with flowers and grass and trees and other butterflies. It is a warm spring day. I put my finger into the jar. The butterfly sits on my finger. I pull it out and our butterfly goes free. We feel a little sad and a little happy. We watch our butterfly land on a flower. It will sip the flower's nectar through a long, coiled tube called a proboscis. Maybe it is a female butterfly. Maybe someday she will lay an egg on a leaf. I know just what will happen then. That egg will hatch into a caterpillar, and that caterpillar will turn into a beautiful butterfly. How many different kinds of butterflies can you find around your neighborhood? Here are some common ones to look for. Monarch, found in most areas of the United States. Black swallowtail, found in all areas but the very far west. Cabbage white, found throughout the United States. Dogface butterfly, found throughout the south, migrates to the Midwest, to the Northeast, and Canada. Common blue, found in the western part of the United States. Buckeye, found in most areas of the United States except for the Pacific Northwest. Readers, what was the butterfly like when it first came into the classroom? Let's look back at the text and find out. The author wrote, today a caterpillar came to school in a jar. It is eating green leaves. It is climbing and wiggling. So when our butterfly first came to school, it wasn't a butterfly at all. It was a tiny caterpillar in a jar. What did the author tell us the caterpillar was like before it was a caterpillar? Let's look back and find out. Oh, our caterpillar started out as a tiny egg. The mother butterfly laid the egg on a leaf. Here was an illustration showing us a lot of butterfly eggs. You can see how tiny they are. And I remember the author said the butterfly, the mother butterfly, lays eggs on a leaf that the caterpillar will eat, that those um, plants are called host plants. So first we had an egg, and then out of the egg hatched a caterpillar. What happened next? Do you remember? Let's find out. Oh, that's right. The caterpillar molts, and after the caterpillar molts four or five times out of its skin, the last time it molts, it molts into a special house called a chrysalis. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis. What was the last step? Do you remember? That's right, last out of that chrysalis comes a butterfly. In this text, the butterfly was a painted lady butterfly. So beautiful. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. There's a tool that scientists and students can use to remember how animals or plants change over time. It's called a life cycle. You might have seen one before. And we can create a life cycle for a butterfly 
now that we have read and know all about how a caterpillar changes into a butterfly. So let's create one. We started with our egg. I'm going to add a label. That arrow shows us what happens after the egg, and we know it's a caterpillar. The author told us another word for caterpillar. It's larva. We have another arrow. What happens after the caterpillar? A chrysalis. There was another word the author told us for chrysalis. Pupa. Another arrow, because we know the caterpillar doesn't end in the chrysalis. Out of the chrysalis comes this gorgeous butterfly. But also, that's the great thing about a life cycle. After the butterfly hatches out of the chrysalis, it may go and lay some eggs of its own. There was a long word for this life cycle. Metamorphosis. Let's make our own butterfly life cycle now. Friends, remember the paper you got earlier? Now is when I want you to get it out. So you have your paper. We're going to fold it in half. It doesn't matter which way. I'm going to fold it in half again. Let's open it up and see what we can create. Here's my paper. It has four rectangles. Does yours have four rectangles? Those four rectangles are where we are going to put the different stages of a butterfly's life. Let me show you. Do you remember what happened first? First, we have our egg. You can write or draw an egg. Then we remember a life cycle has an arrow. After our egg, we have a caterpillar. You can draw or write a caterpillar. Another arrow will show us our spot for our chrysalis. Out of our chrysalis would hatch our butterfly. And then our butterfly would lay an egg. Kindergarten writers, make sure that you're stretching out those words and being brave readers and writers. While you're finishing your life cycle, I wanted to read you one of my favorite books, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. Eric Carle is the author and illustrator of this book. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon. 
We know cocoon is another word for chrysalis. He pushed his way out and he was a beautiful butterfly. Readers, let's see if we can make a life cycle for the very hungry caterpillar. We have our four arrows, just like the ones you made. We start with our egg, then our caterpillar, our chrysalis, and our beautiful butterfly. Now that you've created those amazing life cycles, write a sentence or two about how a caterpillar changes into a butterfly. You can use your second piece of paper for that if you'd like. I've enjoyed doing some literacy learning with you today. Thanks for joining me as you keep learning from home. I look forward to seeing you for our next lesson on KSPS. Mm -hmm.